some people they find it hard to promote their stuff they find it hard to be consistent and persistent with pushing their songs or whatever mm. but if you stop stop thinking about your actions and go right down to your mentality in the first place your mentality needs to be this product or this song it is really good and if people hear it they will be enriched if that's your starting place then everything else flows from there innit Find my way, find my way. Break this rule, take patience, I will wait. Lively. Myself, name's Bliss. Come on. And you are listening to Lively Convo. Yeah. So today we're going to focus a bit more on the music side of things. You know, I put up the last episode last week um, and I got a few questions for some artists, some up and coming artists, about what they would like me to talk about. So that's what we're going to chat about. Come on. Um, Bisty, when it comes to releasing a song, do you need to actually have a strategy? Hmm. Do you question. feel you need to have a strategy or you, should just, or you should just release the music? It's a very good question. Depends on what you're trying to do with the song. My, okay, my thing is this. If I make a song and I spend time on that song and I like the song. For example, I made a song called Finding My Way and I like the song. I genuinely like the song. Like, of course, if I'm releasing anything, I'm going to need to like it. But it's the ones where I put a lot into the song. So cool, you have, you have the song. You want as many people as possible to hear it. Like, for me, when I've made something good, I want as many people as possible to hear it. Or, the way I see it is this. If someone could be enriched, if someone's life can be improved by listening to my song, I am selfish if I don't think of a way to get to them. Right. Plus, if I know my song's gonna make someone smile, or my song's gonna make someone vibe, or my song's gonna make someone, you know, lift, lift a heavier weight than they usually lift, it's gonna make them go from 80 to 85. On mm. the bench press. If you listen to 85 on the bench press, you need to fix up. If it's not triple digits, I don't know what you're doing. But anyway, is that one's Wait, 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 if wait. You, if it's not worry, triple don't digits. Worry it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. But here's the thing. If, if my song, you know, gasses you, right? How can I not get it to you? So that's the way, I, that's my mentality. Right. Like, because right. some people, they find it hard to promote their stuff. They find it hard to be consistent and persistent with pushing their songs or whatever. Mm. But if you stop, stop, thinking about your actions and go right down to your mentality in the first place. Your mentality needs to be this product or this song it is really good. And if people hear it, they will be enriched. If that's your starting place, then everything else flows from there, innit? So that's where my starting place was with, um, with Finding My Way and with a song that they call Style and Grace. That's where my mind was. I thought, this is good. I need as many people as possible who like this sound to hear it. To hear it. And then in terms of your strategy, you plan your strategy based on that. You think, raw, the type of people that I think like this song will be found here. They'll be found here on Instagram. They'll right. be looking at these sort of pages on Instagram. They'll be at these sort of locations in real life, you know? And then you plan your, your content, whether it be your tweets or whether it be what you're putting out on Instagram, you plan your content around that. What do they like? What do I have to offer that these types of people lack? And then you go, you know, you might have, you know, a five week plan or six week plan where you're just, you know, posting out content to a specific demographic of people, innit? You might just be right. doing that, yeah? And then you're building momentum, you're building traction, you're increasing your connection with those types of people. And then you mm. tease the song, tease the song, tease the song. And people are like, raw, this needs to come out. Like, find a way. I remember, there's them ones where, I had teased that song for time. By the time, I mean, the week before it came out, people were like, fam, drop this song. Let me identify the people that like it. Right. Like, the types of people that like it. Like, Find Them Away was just like, ran like, ran the music lovers, people who love grime, people who liked grime, like, Find Them Away. People who like, like, melodic, like, urban melodic. Like, this whole new wave of, like, melody, melody, melody. I wouldn't even call it a new wave, per se, but, like, the new, like, obviously everyone's on the melody thing now, yeah? Mm. But them, man, when they heard the hooks of Find Them Away, they were like, yo, what, like, what's this? This is, da, 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 da. This is cold. So Initially, when you made the track, did you have the, the, those people in mind? The people that actually caught onto the track, mm. did you have them in mind or it just organically... When I made Find Them Away, because you know what it is? I care about the next gen, innit? Like, I care. When I make music, I think it's subconscious. But I always see myself talking to, like, to, like, YG's. Yeah. Not like 10 year olds, like, like YG's, like people who are like 
17, 18, maybe a bit younger, maybe a bit older, a bit older than that. Mm. But I have YG because I work with YGs, innit? So for me, it's the ones where that's who I had in mind. Like when I'm writing songs, I usually think of like transfer my message to them, to the next generation. Because it's like the song is called Finding My Way. Yeah. And I feel like there is an epidemic, I'll say. There's an epidemic of teenagers, of, of just young people who who are finding a way. Because when you're that age, that's what you're doing. You're At that age, you're still finding, trying to find, find yourself even. Find you some are. people are like, yeah, still yeah. find a way. But more time, when you're like that age, you are finding your way. Yeah. So when I wrote it, finding my way, da -da -da, greatness will take patience, I have a way. When I wrote it, yeah. I was thinking, it's a process. And I was actually saw myself performing the song to them, actually telling them like, yo, you're, you're going to find your way. It's just going to take time. That's, that, that's how I envisioned it, innit? Because yeah. I think the best music is written when you're selfless. And obviously, man's here. Man's got the doodle or song. Look at it. Come on. Ah. If you know, you know. If you know, if you know. You know it's okay, Nigerian so. black. Which one and about? Then the Ghanaian thing does its thing, you know. It really clears your skin. But the Ghanaian thing makes your skin more ashy. Oh, okay. But the doodle or song has some essential oils that, you get me? <laughs> All right, cool. Like that. All right, so you are releasing a song. You need a strategy. Now, there's a difference between you putting something on SoundCloud, like you could just give something to your fans. If you just want to give something to your fans, boom, put yeah. it on SoundCloud, let your fans listen. Bang on YouTube, let your fans listen. But if you, I know this person personally, the person that asked this question, I know them personally, innit? Right. And for them, have a strategy because for what she's trying to do, she really cares about quite a large group of people, innit? So for her, yeah, you need to, you need to have a strategy. You need to sit down, I don't know if you have a team or whatever, but sit down, look at the song, analyze who you think it's for, analyze who you think will engage with the song, okay? And then work out ways to communicate to those people. Do that over a period of time, get them engaged, get them ready for the song, and boom, then release it. And then once you've released it, the weeks after that, you continue to promote the same content. You continue to do conversations and engaging content based around the song, continue to do that. Because you want as many people as possible who are in that demographic, in that target audience you have, to hear the song. And if you don't show it to them, you are being selfish because you've got a great song here, it needs to be heard. So Come that's on. my advice to you. Perfect. Um, I think because of technology and because music is so accessible, people mm. will just drop a tune. Like and Spotify, I, you've got Spotify now, you just got yeah. music. You can release a song with no video and just have it on to no no video. It. Yeah. So I don't think it wasn't like that before. It really, was like, it was yeah. artists were label based. Artists and were label based. You had, you had to wait. You had, you had to yeah. plan the video. I mean, you still do that now, but what I'm saying is then it was like they would camp around one release, camp around next week, camp 100%. around next week. Whereas now, you'll be like, hey, one, release one video, another video, another video. It's yeah. Like, feature here, this here, like they are active now. In terms of music now, People consume so much music in so many different ways. Yeah. You know, you've got, you know, streaming, you've got, you know, social media, you know, you've got Insta, Twitter, blah, blah, blah. Snapchat. YouTube. You, of course, YouTube. Yeah, yeah YouTube. Like, just the fact that YouTube is there, like, it's just changed the whole game. Yeah. So I actually think that big artists are, are pressured to do that because it is mm. an attention game. I mean, a lot of artists who aren't pressured by time constraints yeah. were big before the game was like this. And here's why that's significant. The fan bases don't think like the new gen of fan bases. Mm. So the fan base is always gonna be there. Right. So they right. can take a two year break, they can come back like boom, because those old fans are still there, do you understand? So yeah. I feel like for artists that are new and that are breaking out now, there is that pressure of, okay, boom, I've got to be here, I've got to be here, my face has to be here. Yeah. I think that's always been a thing for us. Is artists. it also that's the pressure? Artists, it, oh, it's keeping re your relevance. It's really. relevancy is more important now, I believe. It's more important now. It's, it's go as far as it is, it, it, this could hinder the, the quality of the music because you're just thinking, okay, quantity, let me just put out music. But when we was growing up, it's like mm. artists really took time to to harness, to put the music together, like they really yeah, took like, time like, on the music. It's like the Cheeky Girls, innit? They really thought yeah. about the, the, the style and stuff. Mm. The Cheeky Girls. Yeah. You know who Kano reminds me of? Like, this was hip hop. Who? Nas. In, yeah. when, it, when it comes to consistency, yeah. Yeah, they say Nas, yeah. Nas dropped, when he drops albums, yeah, he drops no, I gems. I, I do, I do, I understand that parallel. I can yeah. understand that parallel. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the quality, I mean, 
it's not just Kano's Liverpool ability. Mm. Kano is elite. As a lyricist, Kano is elite. Like, bar for bar, he's elite. But more than that, it is his ability to paint pictures and paint narrate pictures. for life. Yeah. Like, I remember when he did um, Made in the Manor. The album before this album. When he did Made in the Manor, his storytelling abilities, the different moods in the songs. You had T-shirt weather, T-shirt weather. Right. Then you had Three Wheel Ups, separate grime anthem. Yeah. Complete, I mean, is that ability, and we see that in this album, we see that in this album, um, Hoodies in the Summer. Um, it's like, from the intro, from three years later, to Trouble, then to Class of Deja, it's, it's, it's the, um, the versatility that Kano has that is unmatched. It's that versatility. Yeah, and he's always been versatile. And engage the listener, fam. Like you're listening and you're in that. He's someone that, that could fam. do, even if you go to his old brother, he could someone that could do Reload, yeah? Then he could do Signs of Life. Signs um, of Life. Remember, yeah, remember, he remember did that? Reload, yeah? yeah. Then he did, there are some signs in life. Come on. Signs of Life. I mean, that was a remix of another song. But Signs of Life was such a bad, Signs of Life was a deep tune. Deep tune. Remember the chords on that? Yeah. Like, I like, think it's Da Vinci Jesus again. Well. I da Vinci think as well. well. But Da Vinci, come on, man. He's a, yeah. a legend. Da, da Vinci's an elite with it. But yeah, man, I think today... Oh, wow. So this turn is like Kano appreciation. But I think separate to, to Kano. So he's spoke about Kano. But I think artists today, there is that element of like, we have to be in people's faces 24-7. Yeah. It's always been like that. But now, it's heightened. It's heightened. Yeah. Because the attention span of the listener is they hear an album... Two weeks later, that album is old. That's mad. It's like they don't really so appreciate spend, it. You're telling me the artist has spent a year making an album, then after two weeks it's old. It's That's old. mental. So I think what what it is, I think what's happening is artists are becoming more ingenious about how to prolong the length of um, the album. Not not the length of the album, but prolong prolong the shelf life of the album. You know, whether it be you know. You know, Live Lounge is a good one. You see Live Lounge is coming out two months after the song's coming out. Come out to kind of yeah. like shine light on that song again. Right, right, right. You know, do you know what I mean? People get angry about remixes these days, isn't it? People are like, oh, you know, everyone's always remixing. But the thing is, I actually believe a lot of the remixes are done just to prolong the life of the song. Yeah. Not more now. Because before that was, the original reason for a remix was that. Like, it was, you know to shed more light on the original. That's yeah, why shed more light on the original song. I believe the yeah. reason why there's more remixes in this day and age is for that very reason. You mm. understand? So, um, I don't think it's something to be... Um, just. I don't think there's anything we can do to stop this whole thing of attention span and different things. I think it is something that needs to be adapted to. And I think, I like what JME says um, when James sees that he doesn't subscribe to that. Like, he's just doing his thing the way he's always done it. But then... Arguably, he can do that because he already he has. He's built that yeah, he's fan built, base from the. He's, he's built that fan base from, from before the game was like this. There we go. A, you know, so there, no, there we go. I can't imagine another artist doing that. I, yeah. This day and age, if you look at most new imagine. artists that are winning now, they're very consistent. Very boom, every boom, month boom, they've boom, got a new a new new, 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 tune. new tune. Yeah, new thing. I agree, and I think for me, like if I talk about myself, like. The pressure for me is like, bro, I could put something out now, I can put something out now, I can put something out But what I understand is that when you're up and coming, if you have a good product, you need to drive as much attention to that product as possible. Yeah. And it's not until, I mean, yeah, cool, if you have like a bigger budget, perhaps you can really fire, 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 fire. But mm. when you're coming up, you want to be smart with how you use your money and how you use your time. So... If it means you wait two months, put out a video, wait another two months and put out a video of the, you're just starting out, then so be it. Right. You know, and once you have a certain level of funds, then you could really think about churning things out, you know. But yeah, yeah. man. Finding my way. Finding my way. Break this school, take patience, I will wait.